And we are live on Oz Property Investors. We bring the big names and we have the big fun. And this week, it's just amazing. We've got Todd Sloan. We, I don't know how we're fitting all this quality in this show. We, we've uh, Joe's sort of, Joe's doing what he's doing. No, he's, he's uh, kicking goals, young Joe. So how are you going, Mr. Mr. Josh Webb Collins? Or Mr. I'm good, Webb thanks, Collins. mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, really good. I, I feel like I do... Like you, you guys are you, you're looking schmick, and I, I just I need, need to get a haircut, but I'm I'm going all right. How how you going, Mister T- Todd Pizza Sloan? What's happening, man? I'm I'm good, and I thought people were going to start throwing me their spare change yesterday as well, so I got a hairy. So I I only just beat you to the punch. Otherwise, we were looking like twins yesterday. Ah, oh, that's that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I did have a shave yesterday, but um, yeah, it's bu- busy, busy times. Sort of yeah, t- talking to talking to people, running all this prop, doing all that sort of stuff. So. It does. Um, it it can be quite no time to get a haircut. Yeah, it gets away from you. Absolutely. Yeah. So tonight it is going to be a, an amazing session. We this is a sort of uh, this is a sort of session people love to sort of see and and hear about because that there's there's all that sort of you, you oftentimes have, you have a lot of professionals and there's a lot of knowledge and insight from those people. But I think people connect with the, with the stories and the. The how people got to um, sort of where they where they are and, and just all that sort of thing. So I'm excited yeah. to unpack your journey, Josh, and and sort of because I heard you on on Mr. Sloan's podcast the other day, and and I remember and I remember speaking of, to you probably I don't know we've been speaking by Facebook Messenger for probably four or five years. Same same with Jenny Moll, and yeah. just kind yeah. of seeing you around the Facebook group. So it's exciting yeah. to to air this conversation. So shall we get yeah. into Quotes of the week. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll I'll go first, I suppose. Since um, as you know, Josh, you're the guest. You go first. Um. Yeah. My my quote is um, the the biggest asset in the world is your mindset. So I always go by that because I believe that anything is achievable if you have a positive attitude. So um, that's what I live by every day. So yeah. I like yeah. that. The biggest asset is your mindset. That's yeah. is that an original. Pardon? Is that an original quote, or is that from who's that from? I just saw. I just I follow a lot of just different things on Instagram. I just saw it one day in a photo, and I was like, it, it just clicked. And I didn't really look into it much further than that, but it just it just made me just really go. That's so true because you know it's so easy to focus on you know negatives, and but like with a positive attitude and a, a can do attitude, I think you can always tackle through any sort of obstacles. So. It helps me in with it's helped me with my property investing, but also in my job as well because you know it can be quite challenging at times in sales. And um, but it's always just about well, if you can if you can visualize yourself achieving it, and you you make it happen one way or another. So, yeah. and there's a few things that I I regret not unpacking with you the other day, Josh. That I'm I'm kind of excited that we can now, and I think that's a big part of of your success, your flavor, what's got you where you are, but also in my opinion, what's going to get you to the next few stages that you're going towards as well, man. So I think oh, that, that quote is so fitting. So if you can't remember who it's from, just, just own it tonight. That's a Josh Webb yeah, Collins original. This is me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should, you should yeah, have that like website, it. the JWC. It's a, you can put it on, <laughs> a, put on a, a t-shirt and a hat. I think it'd be good fun. Can, can you guys actually hear me all right? Because I've just realized you're coming through a different speaker. So I don't know if you're, I'm even like the mic's properly working or what. Yeah, yeah can, I can hear you loud and clear. It's, can you can hear me fine? Like, yeah. Yeah, you've probably okay. got your, your second or your third or your fifth microphone on. So you're, I, you're, I don't you're, know. I just, <laughs> I'm just making sure there's no feedback or anything here. No, no, you're good. So, okay, cool. Todd, what, what is your quote of the week? Or do you want me to go? Well, I can go. Yeah, mine. My, my, I literally just finished watching Breaking Bad. Like, I mean, twenty minutes ago. Uh, I was, oh. I was feeling rubbish today, so I just needed to have a little bit of a, yeah, a reset. And I thought, oh, I finally finished Breaking Bad. I only started it when I got sick a few months ago, and um, it's it's terribly good. And I think it's more addictive than the meth that they make in the show. Like, it's it's a wonderful TV program, but it made me think of this today. And I don't know if this is positive or negative, but the quote is, it's never too late to be who you might have been by George Eliot. And I just kind of thought that fits a little bit because Walter, I mean, he certainly did not start out on that path, that, but he seemed to fit in it pretty well. Yeah. That's awesome. I, re- I really like that one. I, I remember your previous one. It was um, by that by that British comedian, Jim, what was his name? Or that, or, yeah, the- uh, Jim Rohn, was it? 
No, no, no. Jim Rohn's a motivational speaker. Uh, Jimmy yeah. Carr? Yeah, Jimmy Carr, that book or something, something about... Oh, yeah. yes, what was that? There's nothing you can buy in the mall today that you're going to give a crap about in, in a year's time or something like that. But yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. so true. It's just yeah. go for moments and memories, not, not stuff. So true. Yeah. I feel, I feel like we're, we're sort of, yeah, it's, it's, we're getting a bit metaphysical, which is okay. I don't mind that. It's, it's good to, like, it's, 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 under, it's an underplayed asset, as, as Josh said. Your mindset is your biggest asset. So onto that, I, I probably have. Well, what's yours, man? It is sometimes, is, is sometimes adversity is what you need to face in order to become successful. And I think that's that's actually I don't know who that's I think it was by an American actress. So I think yeah. that's a, the epitome of I, I was thinking back to your we chatted about your story. I mean I knew a little bit about it three or four weeks ago, and just I don't know that you would have been in the position you would have been today if you had not have faced. And we're going to unpack a lot of those challenges, whether that be through finance. Oh look, Toddy, what, what's yeah? You can, can I don't think it? I need the headphones. <laughs> no, no, oh, <laughs> they're not are working. You, are you on the headphones because I told you to put the headphones on? No, because it's where the sound's supposed to be coming out of. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You're good. So yeah, it's 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 interesting. All that adversity because people like I, you know, like I saw a post today saying that that they need a reason to dislike um, the, the 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 RBA governor Glenn Stevens, and mm. I was just like, what? Uh, and they were joking about it, but I said, "What is the re- like? Why is this person? Is this, why is this person to blame for for your problems? Like, yes, he's the person who increased interest rates and will probably continue to do so. But I just, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit, yeah, a little bit pri- privileged to sort of say that because there's a lot of people out there that are hurting. But um, I just think, yeah, are, you, are you almost saying a bit of like take responsibility for for what you can control instead of blaming like surroundings? Kind of take charge of what you can. Is that kind of what you mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and the adversity is going to happen anyway. So I, I I don't know anybody who hasn't struggled with with property investment, with with life, with with anything yeah. really. So we can't do anything yeah. about it. So we just got to learn to, like you said, focus on the things that we can control to improve ourselves. And yeah, that's all we can do. Yeah, and I think some of the most amazing stories generally come from people that that have had a ton of adversity thrown at them. Like I, I watched a Joe Rogan interview about that one day. And he was talking to, to one of his, <clears throat> whoever it was that was on the, the show, saying how the most interesting people in his life have all had like like screwy childhoods, horrible like teen years, all this stuff. But they're the most amazing men and women like in, in their 20s, 30s, 40s yeah. as they grow up. And he's like, what do you think we're doing to our kids? We've now got like these, these amazing schools that we send them to. We're, we're doing all these wonderful things in their life when maybe it actually was the adver- adversity that actually helped all of these people succeed and, and grow into the magnificent people that they are later in life. On that note, we, we, let's, um, <laughs> so on tonight's session, we're, we're going to talk about some, some adversity because there, there is some in your story and uh, it's more around the proper investing adversity rather than anything else. But we're going to unpack the reason why you sort of invest because I think that's a key driver for your story and, and why you sort of continue to, it's a yeah. If you have a, a a big hairy audacious goal, it actually means something to rather than just saying, "Oh, I hate my boss." Which I don't know. To me, that might motivate some people, but hating or like yeah, not not liking something is 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 often not going to necessarily get you to or get you as fired up. So we're going to talk to that. We're going to unpack a little bit of your journey and your investing. But yeah, I'm I'm yeah. interested to hear about. We'll unpack your mindset, which um and just I don't know. It's a hard thing to unpack, but we'll ask a few questions and we'll see which ones stick because. Yeah. I think I like to sort of throw it out there. So, and we'll we'll get to some Q and A. And interestingly, we'll, uh, there'll be plenty of questions about your story and about your journey because it's been amazing. So, let's get yeah. into our first uh, our first sponsor for the day, and then we shall get on to the the person, the man of the hour, Josh, Josh, Mister Josh uh, Webb Collins. Awesome. Let's get into it. Just uh, don't play amongst yourselves here, people. Don't mind me. It was seamless, Jeff. No one noticed. <laughs> Especially when that situation is purchasing one of the most expensive assets of your life against a trained property expert in the form of a real estate agent. It's a scary thought. 
but it is a skill that can be taught. Do you want to learn how to become fully prepared when buying a property? So you can get out there, buy your dream home or investment property without the fear of actually messing it up. Scott Agate, the founder and expert property negotiator at Hello House, has been helping people buy their properties by stepping in and negotiating with the agents and saving his clients tens of thousands, and in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Scott has now decided to share all that he's learned over the past 28 years in real estate so you can go out there and do the exact same thing on how to find a property, analyze that property, negotiate on that property and transact on it to get the best results. He's created the Get Buyer Ready course which is a step-by-step -step guide on how you too can become an expert property negotiator. It's the easy way of how you can avoid all of these agent games and get the best purchase price on that dream home or your investment property. The course is in short bites for busy people with no fluff at all. Just all the information you need to get buyer ready and secure that next property with confidence at the best price. Scott has been kind enough to give our community a massive discount with the link below. Sign up today before you even think about putting an offer on that next property and it will be one of the best decisions you ever make. There we go. So yeah, that was, um, it's, it's yeah, I've, I've sort of looked at that course and it's just um it it can really take your investing to the next level um but but yeah it's, it's just just great to i mean i, I love, love the sort of we had scotty on last week talk negotiation but yeah and negotiation is one of those sort of i'm interested to hear actually before we get into it how, what's what's your you work in sales josh so what 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 ne kind of negotiation what is your negotiation tactic like what's your how do you negotiate it's, it's, on profit it's quite interesting because the job that I'm in now is selling into hospitals. So whereas in my previous sales role was selling into discount retail wholesale. So it's um, going like, obviously, I feel like the same principles apply, but just different customer base. But what I do at the moment is, you know, especially with the Victorian public hospitals, unfortunately, a lot of products like your consumables and your high volume products, everything is priced unfortunately, because I feel, which is disappointing in a sense, because I feel like anyone can come in and go, I've got this cheap product for you. So I, I always try to think a little bit outside the box. Sometimes it doesn't win me the business, but sometimes it does, and that's fine. But I always try to think first, before I, I always have price as a last, last resort option, I always go in there first finding out what the problem is, what the solution is, sorry, what the problem is, and then if, and then I try and work with them a solution, and then we can negotiate on the price once I've built the relationship and built their trust and they can see that I'm there for the right reasons. Whereas if I go in there just going, buy this, I can do it for this price. There's just, I feel like it's just a transaction. There's no, um, it's not personalized. And I just, I, I want, I want to present myself and also build a reputation for, you know, obviously the company that I'm working for at the moment, I want to be able to, you know, that like it is a personalized service that they're going to get because, you know, ongoing, not just, if to buy something off me and I always go in thinking, I, I don't want to go in thinking how much am I going to get out of this customer today? I always go in, well, how can I help them? And we, we half the time, sometimes I'll have appointments and we don't, we, we don't start talking about business until the very end. We might not even talk about it at all because I know that I'm building the foundation because there's plenty of time for price and all the nitty gritty stuff. So I feel like I always start with building that foundation first and the relationship and then we focus on the negotiations because then once they've got that once they get to know you they trust you and you know so you might still get stuff over the line if it is a bit more expensive because they'll be able to see the value in you as a person and the product and the business that you're bringing to them so i sort of i hope that sort of answers your question but i sort of just do it in a bit of a different way and touch wood it's helped me be you know achieve really good results in my job so and how does that help you on the property side of things, Josh? Are you finding that that's something that you do now when you're looking to purchase a property? You will like really strengthen relationships with with agents and PMs. Like, do do you use that in the investing side? That skill? I actually had my most recent purchase was pretty much exactly that. So it was, um, and I'm sure we'll unpack it a bit later. But yeah, it was just that. I may have jumped ahead a bit here. No, no, no that's all right. I, I, we do that. Well, had an, had an awesome, <laughs> I've got a great relationship with a, my property manager in Cairns and she has been up there, I think it was, she said like 20 years or something. So she yeah. helped me. But then the agent selling the house was actually very like-minded like myself. It was just like, look, I was really upfront. I said, look, this is my intention. This is my budget. I can, 
you know, it's you know, offers over X, Y, Z. I know it's quite close to that number, but I'm willing to do this, 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 and this if it helped. You know, like what? Tell me a little bit about the situation with the vendor. Like, I, I'm happy yeah. to work with them to help. Like, if I can't, I might not be able to come in with the highest price sort of thing. Like, we had a bit of a chat on the phone, and I was like, this could go either way here. But I just said, I was really upfront about my intentions. And I said, look, you know, he's like, oh, we want to obviously get the highest price. I said, look, 100% agree with that. But this is my budget. Um, if you could please take it to them. And, but I'm happy to work on other things if it meant that they, if it can help them. So I sort of was trying not to just focus on the price again, because it's, whilst mm-hmm. it is a factor, it's not the only factor, if that makes sense. Yeah. And as, as yeah. a real estate agent, Todd, not, not to, I suppose, uh, as a former agent, how did you typically sort of, if somebody came to that proposition, how, how would you typically treat it, treat that? It, it all depends on the details of it. But what Josh is saying is, is pretty much exactly it. And to, to sort of distill it, find the problem, solve the problem. That's, that's really what it is. When yeah. people walk in there and do like sales, it's, it, it turns people off in my opinion. It sounds yeah. like Josh and I have probably got very similar kind of styles, but if you walk in there and go, hey, I'm a human. Oh, you're a human too. Hey, what's your problem? Oh, cool. Let me see if I can sell that for you. Like it, it works. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't a real estate agent's problem though? They, they want to they get find a cool way to get the commission. Isn't that, the, isn't that a problem? Is I thought you were going to say, isn't, isn't, isn't there a problem that they're not human? that's fantastic yeah but no that's sort of how that's sort of what i do so yeah yeah all right well i I better introduce you because there 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 may be some people who have not listened to to todd's uh latest podcast and just (laughs) coincidence that you did happen to release it which it was a fantastic dovetail so you you're a person who've worked in sales i think we all work in sales but you've You've unpacked a little bit of that uh, most of your working life. I think you said you used to work in sort of retail as well. You worked in sort of like a fast, and there was a chemist as well. Was it, am I correct about the fast food shop? Yeah, yeah I worked in worked in a winery when I was fifteen, um, and then when I was in high school, I would my my best friend's mum managed the canteen, so I, I I worked Monday to Friday, recess and lunch, and earned forty two dollars a week. And got free lunches through from year seven to year twelve, so that was all right. And um, it, it was it was good though because my friend group were we all worked in the canteen, so it was a bit of fun. And so that was my spending money throughout high school. And then I just saved my money that I worked on my job on weekends. And then um, and then yeah, when I and then I worked in pharmacy for a few years. Um, and then and then yeah, got obsessed with business and the idea of buying a house, like crazily obsessed, like ridiculously it's all i thought about and then yeah and then eventually worked my way into sales so yeah it just sort of happened <laughs> yeah and and that's um that that's been a big part of your sort of um investing and you know i think you've you've bought you recently bought your fourth or is your third three or four on, on my third i'm trying yeah hopefully we get a fourth soon but <laughs> yeah yeah there we go. Uh, not, not hopefully. It's it's not it's not if yeah, it's it uh, when <laughs> it so you're going to make it happen. And uh, but I, I think the thing that I love and people resonate is you have a very specific reason for it. You're investing. Your why is is um, and tell us about your why. Like what what's the reason yeah, you invest? So I've um as I was touched with yourself, Todd, and also with you know Jeff the other week. I'm I'm very very close with my family, and it's a very it's a very sensitive topic just because, you know, I have a lot of respect for my family and I've, um, you know, I, I've, I've, lived, I've been very lucky in the sense that I was able to live at home up until about four months ago and then, I, you know, I got, I'm in my own place now. But I, I've, I've always had incredible support from my parents and my family and, um, you know, I don't have any kids or anything at the moment, but, like, my, my main reason why I'm doing this is to eventually, like, I want to be able to give back to the people that have helped me and you know and that's my parents you know they like they they work very very hard and they have their like their their whole lives and you know they're they're they've got their own business and they just work so hard and they always do whatever they can to ensure that you know myself and my brother have always had everything we need and more and um you know i've been very fortunate to always you know, have family holidays and all those things, which are very important. And, you know, at the current times, my parents aren't in the position to 
to to where, where they're living and where their business is is you know to buy a help house to live in and that's obviously that's one of their big goals and and whilst it is a huge because of the prices where they live um it is a one something that i one day would love to be able to do is to if i can't you know buy them one outright at least help them just to get them in the market it's something i've wanted to do for a long time and then yeah and just basically the overall why is give back to people because i've been so fortunate that i've had people all my friend groups my family have always supported me in my crazy ideas you know like i'm very spontaneous with all my with my in my journal i've got all this all these random ideas that have come to come to light in the last few years and i've always had support and i think that goes a long way with helping continuing to be able to do it because Again, it's, you know, mindset. If you're happy and you've got a good network of people that believe in you, I think it really helps. So, yeah. My- Josh, so can, can I just quickly jump in just so we can get to know you a little bit better on that sort of crazy idea mindset? And I I want to paraphrase you there and say big thinking instead of crazy ideas because I think it's a massive positive. Yeah. What's one that you'd be comfortable sharing with with everyone? Oh, I've got a lot. I've got a lot that I've thought about. But um well, one is that I, you know, I want to try and buy as many properties as I can mm-hmm. and eventually be able to, I've always loved helping people. That's always been my thing. And I went a few years ago, I did a lot of, a, a bit of volunteering here and there with, um, with like, with, with, with youth and I, I've, I've wanted to do some more stuff with people that are experiencing homelessness and I guess one day I'd love to be able to be able to give back to community and give my time back to, to that. So I, I guess my, 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 one of my ideas was, was that I build property and rent it out to people that can't afford it. Like I, I've had all these ideas of how I can, how I can, you know, still, obviously I need to be able to make money, but how do you still be ethical? All these things like, but I've, you know, all these things I've wanted to do. Um, but it, so it give back in a really big way is kind of what I'm hearing. Sorry, give back in a really big way. Yeah, I is, just is what do, I'm hearing. I don't have the exact thing yet. Like I, but I, I want to just do something that helps other people because I just feel like there's not enough of that these days, and the needs, you know, and it, it, it's I can't even put it into words. Sorry, but I get like this fire when I can help someone and. I love I love to be able to be involved in helping someone achieve something that they're you know, success or anything. It, it like even in my job, like I just I love working within the team and just helping other people. Like it's just it's so motivating. So yeah. What where, where do you, where do you think um where, where do you think that came from? Like I know that's a tough question to think about. Like but where did that come from? Um, probably I'll, I will revert back to my family quite a fair bit. Because yeah, they're my biggest supporters, I guess. So, um, my, both my mum and dad have just always said, just reach for the stars, sort of thing. Like, just just push yourself and do don't you know, do big things and take risks, and you know, always be humble and be kind. And I've just yeah, I get my, my mum's like that as well. She's like you know, loves a good chat with people and. You know, she can sell ice to an Eskimo sort of thing. So she's always loved working with people and just helping people. And I think I've just watched that as I've grown up and I've seen how much she's had an impact on people in her life. And I guess I've just sort of, yeah, I guess followed that effect and gone, well, that's that's a really good trait and I want to I wanna develop myself to be like that. So what um, made you actually follow it? Because like you can do anything, like reach for the stars. Like it, I'm sure there's a lot of people that probably hear that, but just kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Where well, you actioned it. Why why? Well, I've always been a, not to sound in any way cocky, but I've always been a go-getter I'm always wanting more and that's not a sense of greed or anything like that it's just I'm always just going I just get excited about taking that leap and Mm -hmm. not necessarily knowing what's at the other end whilst that can come with risks but I guess I just thought why not and I've also again I'm going to refer back to I've watched my parents do it they 
Do I've what? Watched, I've watched just take risks and be spontaneous and okay. not be so cautious. And I think I've gone, well, anything is possible. And I've just gone and done it. I, I wanted to be different. I wanted to yeah. be different because there is so... I remember when I was actually at uni when I decided I wanted to buy my block of land and, you know, I wasn't really happy and I just didn't want to be there and I wasn't giving it my all. So I was like, well, this is clearly a waste of my time. But I just felt probably a bit in my own head, but there was that, you know, stigma that, you know, you've got to go to uni and get a good job, all that. But I just, something wasn't right. And I just was kept obsessing over the thought of, well, what I'm going to do once I finish this degree, um, you know, how can I turn it into a business? How can I utilize these skills to push me forward for the next 10, 15, 20 plus years? And I was like, it's not going to happen, Josh. And I knew what I had to do. I'd saved up a good amount of money. It was just sitting there. I was like, Josh, you got to do it. <laughs> like you got, you know what you want to do. You just got to wipe out the noise. And I just went and did it. And I was petrified, but my dad came with me to look at the block of land and I put an offer on it and there was a bit of negativity. I was probably a little bit at first really excited. I was telling everyone just because I was excited and there was that negativity like, oh, it's a huge risk. You're only, I think I was 19, 20. And, you know, what if you go bankrupt? What if it doesn't work? What if you lose your job? Why don't you just wait until you get a good income and, what if, first, what, if uh, what if interest rates go up to yeah, 5% or 6%? Yeah, what, what happens when they go back to 18? <laughs> exactly. What if, what if, what if? And But at first I took all that on board and I was like, oh, maybe those people are right because, you know, these people talking to me have all got 20, 30 years plus on me in life experience. Maybe I'm maybe I am taking a bit too much of a risk here. But again, I got obsessed with the what if it works? Like I, I was just like, well... Worst case, I'll just buy it. If I go worst case, I go bankrupt. I'll buy again in a few years. Like it's all good. Like, but what if it works? And I believe to this day that my my why and my mindset pushed me through that. And yeah, it's got me to where I am because of that. So, can, can I ask oh, where a lot of that talk came from? So, sorry, Jeff. Just real oh, quick sorry. question yeah, there. You go. You go. If 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 there's one sort of those those people that maybe are like younger than you and and yeah maybe just well meaning people that are maybe on on your sort of level around your age experience and then pe- maybe people a little bit ahead, what level was that advice of oh it's a terrible idea you go bankrupt was, was that coming from from above you by the side below you where was that? Um, you mean like in terms of like friends or family or just like in terms yeah, of what? I think I'm just experience. curious because. The, the the media sort of always seems to push the agenda of like basically if you're in your 20s you're screwed you're not buying a house and like yeah. here you are as as a 25 year old with with three of them about to buy your fourth like obviously it is possible you've done it and like several times yeah. and i was just wondering like that narrative then on, on the flip side to that instead of it being like oh it's impossible Where's that advice of, oh, don't do it? And so, of course, if that's what people are hearing, that it's going to be impossible. It's You're pushing shit uphill. Look, I think um, the people that sort of had said that to me, like, and I think maybe the ones that might not be, and I hope this doesn't come across in the wrong way, but might not be 100% happy with their, maybe they regret not doing something like that when they were that age, maybe. I don't know. Um, And also, I guess, because it was just very different and out there, maybe. I, I never really asked people why. I just sort of was like, oh, that's, I'm a really, you know, positive and happy person. And, you, you know, I'm trying, I was excited about something that new for me. And, yeah, you're yeah. being negative. So I, but I'd like to think that people were, you know, happy for me because I'm always happy for everyone. But I guess it could be maybe just something that they've gone through in their personal circumstances and maybe, they don't want that for me, maybe. Like they're worried that I might do the same thing. Like if they if they had a bad experience, I don't quite know. But um I soon learnt that sometimes it's best not to just expose what you're doing and just I soon I soon I soon have learnt the people that want to build you up. And um mm-hmm. and I think I've just yeah, very close I've closed that circle quite close to me. And um, how do you identify those people that that want to build you up like what good question what, 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 oh yeah um i guess just 
people that don't not necessarily don't question what you're doing because I think it's good to be to be challenged because it's that's only that's that's a healthy thing I think but at the same time it's the people that believe in you and just can can also visualize your, themselves I think if they understand your reasoning I think that's really important I think if people don't fully understand your 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 reasoning for anything you do they're always probably going to have a bit of a negative sort of view on it. So I think it's just about maybe giving people the time to also just explain why you're doing what you're doing so then they give them the chance to understand it. So I guess how I've identified the people that I guess, you know, have helped me achieve what I have is that the people that not necessarily agree with me, but just go, that's all, like, you can do it. Like, you know, it's, yeah. Just Is it a bit it. of a birds of a feather flock together kind of situation? Yeah, I'd say that, yeah. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah. Well. It's, it's so true. So yeah. it, it is very, very true. And I, I'm, so, I'm a big believer on quality, not quantity. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Mm. Speaking of speaking of quality, not quantity, um, I'll, I'll take it on a segue because it's a good one. A slightly different track. <laughs> how, how big? How big do you want to grow your portfolio? Like I'm fast forwarding through it a little bit, and we'll talk this later. But I want to know it's now. Actually, it's, look, I don't have an exact number yet because I, yep. I'm I'm very lucky that I've, I'm still very very young. Um, but it's definitely a lot more than what I'm on now. <laughs> but I've got to. Um, at this stage, I don't have an exact number, um, but I'd like to try and it'd be, you know, at, at, at minimum of around sort of probably 15 would be ideal because I feel like I've got a lot of time on my side. So I've got time to, you know, make sure I put everything in place to be able to achieve that. And my broker is on the same mindset. He's like, well, why not make it 25, not 15? <laughs> like, so, which is really good because I've got him on my side and he gets my, 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 my obsession. And, um, but yeah, look, I think as I progress and I guess, you know, you get more experience with investing because I've still got a lot to learn. Uh, absolutely. I think I'll probably get more of a clear understanding of, okay, no, nah, I'm, I'm okay with this now. Like I'm going to focus on some other things, but I'm definitely nowhere near it yet. So how about same, same question for you, Todd, like have you, I mean, this is not, not interviewing Todd Peter Sloan, but have you kind of thought about, I think we asked this before, but like it's been six months probably since we've had you on the show, maybe even longer. Have you thought about where your kind of end thing is? So have you yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Ted, 10 million portfolio, 50-50 LVR, 6% P&I with a 7% yield equals 200,000 a year passive. There you go. Yeah. So if so, two hundred k net, or are you, are you going, are you yeah, going yeah, gross? Yeah, after expenses, yeah, yeah, no, definitely not gross. Like, oh, oh wait, are you referring to net tax or net after like operating oh, costs? I mean, yeah, net after operating because I mean, of then yes, we've all got to, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. How, how did that's you arrive awesome. at that number? Why ten million? Uh, well, because that's why that's where it sits with a higher interest rate. Well, it's actually not so much a higher interest rate; it's a historical average interest rate. Plus, it's Seven, principal and interest. Uh, it was six six percent is apparently the historical average. So, if it's six yeah. percent with seven percent yields, and a lot of my properties, once I've renovated them, I'm getting closer to like nine percent yields in some cases. So, overestimated that, or yeah. underestimated rather. And a fifty fifty LVR in my mind is just stable. Uh, there you yeah, go. That, then I talked to Steve McKnight about it and he was like, how about a $5 million portfolio freehold? Stop your 50-50 LVR. I was like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I, haven't listened to that. I haven't listened to that episode with Steve yet, so I don't know if that's on. No, that was just a phone call the other day. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I really, yeah, I just love how down to earth Steve is, but okay, back on track. So yeah, let's yeah. So talk to Gosh. us about the, the adversity and the, and the resilience. So, so property number one, because that, that one, I remember you were sort of struggling I thought it was with getting the finance, but it was the getting the what was what, what was tell us about deal number one the the property in Bendigo I think it was uh, it's in Ballarat actually it, Ballarat um, the bees one of the bees yeah <laughs> I nearly bought in Bendigo actually um, so that was look that was a bit of a, a lot of learning curves were done there a lot of decisions were made that without knowledge or education which is not great, but I, you know, we sometimes need to go through those to be able to learn. And I was saying to you earlier, Todd, as well, like sometimes we need to go through those to then learn 
okay, we, let's not make that mistake on the next one and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I bought the block, sat on it for 12, just over 12 months, um, give or take, pay, tried to pay a little bit off the principal, not really understanding much about investing at all and the logistics of finance. And um, anyway, I then started to think about, okay, what am I going to do with this? And I started approaching builders to say, hey, I've got this block of land. What's, you know, what's the process? How do I get started? And um, sort of having a basic understanding by this time of like, you know, okay, equity, how is it going to fund the build, all these kinds of things. I started doing a bit of learning about that. And um, anyway, so I approached quite a few different builders just to get pricing and just, you know, try and understand what would be required from a rental perspective, like I went to some different property managers and said, hey, I've got these plans. Um, this is the suburb, this is the location, the dress, et cetera. What do you think I should be including? Like what's going to stand out? Because I didn't want it to be, not that I wanted to overcapitalize and get things I didn't need, but I also didn't want it to just be blend in with every other property. I wanted it when people walked in for open inspections, I wanted them to feel like this has been built not just to make money. It's been built to make it someone's home. But with I also was trying to keep it balanced because I didn't want to put emotion into it either because I know that's not good when <laughs> investing. So how, how, I did you, was how did you manage? How did you manage that? Like how did you? Oh, it was difficult because I remember looking at my dad came with me to look at like all the simple things like the carpet and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I like that color. And I was just like, no, Josh, stop being like get get more level headed here. So you're looking at like the $120 a square meter stuff and kind of pulling yourself back to more like like sort of $40 a square meter, exactly. that kind of thing? Exactly. So what I ended up doing was I was like, okay, don't go the cheapest option, but don't go the most expensive. Try and go mm -hmm. mediocre because then it's also going to be better value long term. It's going to last longer. Try and, be, you know, try and balance it, a bit of both because as much as I say no emotion, I am a bit of an emotional person. I'm, uh, I, 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 all I do care. So... It's um, I, I have to have some of that to some degree. And um, but I tried to keep it as balanced as possible and also trying to think of the price as well because I didn't want to overcapitalize. So there, yeah, I um went to one builder, went to some property managers, they were like, no, no, focus on these types of things for this area. This is what you know, I said, Great. So I went back to the builder and said, Let's get rid of this, don't need that, but let's put this in. So the costs were sort of evening out when I'd remove some and add some. Um, so yeah, thought I was thought it was all good I went to the builder and then got all the got my contract drawn up I think I paid a I thought two or three grand deposit um subject to finance and whatnot and um and I went a fair bit with him I started drawing up stuff and I went to apply for finance and the problem was because the block was like stupidly steep like really steep the builder said oh it's going to cost you I think it was um it was about 300 and, oh God, I've probably changed that. It's 330 or 340 grand or something. And I thought, oh, this is great. This is cheap. You can't buy a house for that. You know? And then I went to the bank and they're like, yeah, I want to borrow what I think whatever the amount was. And I've got an appraisal of like 390 a week rent or 400 a week, whatever it was for a 322. And they're like, yep, yeah, no worries. Put it through. Nah, sorry. Um, it's not enough income for the amount of money that you're borrowing. We think the house isn't worth that. And that whole saying that the house was worth more than the land, not good. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, so I was like, oh, okay. Not really understanding what to do next. I was like, this isn't good. What do I do? Went back to the builder. We tried to cut down on some costs, but then that brought the rental appraisal down. So we weren't mm -hmm. really, we were sort of, we weren't, we were sort of going three steps forward, three steps back. So we weren't really moving anywhere with it. Yeah. And then I, was sort of, I got into a little bit of a slump. Like I like, you know, like I was a bit like shivers. Okay, what have I done? And um, anyway, they said, look, sorry, Josh, we can't go any cheaper for you. And I uh, tried to go to a different bank. No, still the same thing. I think at that time I'd gone to three, like three, three brokers or something. And, um, and then went to another builder. No, sorry, we're not going to, we don't build on blocks like that. <laughs> I thought, oh God, what have I, I'm starting to get really scared. And um, went to another builder. Nah, don't touch me. I was like, all right. They're like, we don't do blocks like that. I was like, oh, it made sense now why that was the only block left in the estate. It makes sense why it was so cheap. Little did I know. And um, anyway, I called, I, I did a bit of researching and there was a real estate agent from McGrath who lived um, on, who was building a house on the, at the end of the street that I bought. And I went and had a chat to him. 
And I just said, hey, what can you do an appraisal on my block for me? Do you, I, I, do you think I should sell it? This is how much I owe. What are your thoughts? And he's like, yeah, look, you could probably sell it for like one, I think it was like 180, something like that. And I thought, all right, I've made money on it. Like, and I've paid a bit off it. I've got to, I'll walk away with a bit of cash. Like, it's not all bad. I'll go on, but I'll go and buy an established house. And then um, he said, don't do that. And I said, why? Like, I can't find a builder, mate. Like, I'm just wasting my time and I can't get finance. And he said, just don't. He goes, I know, I know a builder that might be able to help you. He goes, because they're building for me. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. His block was a little bit, little bit less steep. But I was like, okay, there's hope. He goes, just don't build. Uh, sorry, don't, don't sell it because if, if you can get a house on here, it will make you a lot of money and you will be able to buy other houses. And, and anybody who said real estate agents aren't humans, Todd, obviously hadn't spoken to this uh, Mr. Mr. Real Estate Agent or Mrs. Real Estate Agent over in Bendigo. I don't know why I'm getting pinged right. for that. <laughs> And I wasn't. What are you talking about? His name was Josh as well, so maybe it was meant to be. I don't know, but um, uh, but yeah, he put me on to put me on to this, to Hotondo, and um, yeah, we got plans together. Bought, we got the price down. We got a much better spec house for about fifty grand less, but a four bedroom. That's and, huge. So extra bedroom, and, and you save fifty grand. Exactly, and then we got a rental appraisal. At the time, just for finance reasons of four, I think four thirty-five or something. I can't remember exactly, roughly around that. And I thought, great, this this is good. You know, I knew I could pay the loan back. And then, um, yeah, got the finance approved, and yeah, we started building. So um, it was it was interesting because it was you know obviously getting all the nitty gritty stuff done, and then COVID hit, which brought everything to a halt, and there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, and there was a lot of, a bit, you know, a bit, a bit anxious, not knowing what was going on. And just, um, so there's a lot of lessons learned there as well. And, um, but it definitely taught me a lot of lessons like ne for next time, like what to look out for and what questions to ask before buying something. And, um, but yeah, the build process wasn't too bad. Like I got my, I just got my dad to come up with me and look at like at each stage just to before I signed off for the bank to approve the you know, fund the money. And um, yeah, so it wasn't probably towards the end, about a week before handover, that the I think I told you about this as well, Todd, that the retain mm -hmm. the called me and site supervisor and he I don't know if he took me really seriously throughout the most of the process, but that's okay. <laughs> um, he, he sort of was like, oh, we're coming to a bit of a boo-boo. And I said, oh. Boo-boo. I'm thinking. Was, was he carrying a pot of honey? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, I don't know. And you were going a little bit of a boo-boo, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we're too old because we know that reference, though, Todd. I mean, yeah, probably. I'm a little bit younger than you, but, jeez, Yogi Bear, smiling the amateur. <laughs> But sorry, Josh, a boo boo. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, mate. The um, he called me and I'm like, Oh, I'm getting the keys in like eight days or something. I'm like, what's happened? He goes, Oh, our, our team of uh, we've cut out too much, like the site cut, it's really like, like there's nowhere for the fence to go and the and we need a retaining wall. And I said, Okay, no problem, like get it done. Like, not even like, I just was like, you get it sure, I don't care. He's like, Oh, but. How are you going like, to, it's going to cost you money. And I said, what do you mean? It wasn't on my plans. And I was told that I didn't need one. And uh, anyway, I had a few discussions with the owner of the bill. Like it was a bit of a thing, but it was going to cost me like, oh, it was something stupid. It was ridiculous. I can't even remember the exact figure, but I said to him, look, I'll just do it myself with, because my neighbor, um, his brother was an engineer. So he, He's like, don't waste your money on that. It's too expensive. I'll talk to my brother because he'll make sure it's all up to spec with council and all that jazz, all the all the boring stuff. <laughs> and um, and I said, oh, I don't want to deal with any of that. So I said, if you can help me though, that's fantastic. And um, I was a bit nervous though because I was like, I've got a house with one. I had three quarters of the fence done, but on this side, well, the left side was just rock and nothing else. And I'm like, oh my god, how am I going to rent it out and all these things. And um, that, that anyway, would have probably been that would have been an issue for a, a loan as well. Like the bank would have looked at that, they would have come and did a done a, did a, spite in, a site inspection and said, "Well, no, we're not we're not funding this land because you got issues yeah. with your sort of your build over there." 
probably. Yeah. Did you think of just like getting some of those little hand like things that you see at climbing wall places and be like, nah, man, this is a feature. It's a climbing wall. Just it's yeah. this is supposed to look like this. <laughs> Add an extra 40 bucks to the rent or something. Yeah. Like why not? I charge people entry, cash flow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, I don't know. It was it was an interesting thing. I, I had no idea though. Like I didn't realize that two weeks later, once I had the keys, I'd be out there in bloody thirty five degrees in bloody holes helping dig. And it was <laughs> I had to, I with you know excavators and stuff. It was uh, I was like shit, shit. This is bad. But are, are you normally a pretty hands on kind of guy? Like was that out of your depth or is that normal for you? A little bit. Like I'm not a little bit. Like I like to get out there, but like I. In my family, my dad's definitely the more like you know mechanically minded and I mean good on the tools sort of one. I'm good yeah. with the I'm good with the finances and the <laughs> and the talking, but um, yeah, when it comes to that, it was a bit out of my comfort zone. But it was good, like I learned a lot. And um, the the neighbor was fantastic. Like he his brother came down, he did all the stuff he had to do for council, and we got it done. But it was just oh, it was stressful, and it ended up only costing us in total like it could be split at 50-50, was it was about three or four grand each so obviously we had a lot of help like we didn't have to pay for labor or anything which was a huge thing but um it would have cost me oh, an absolute arm and a leg and i wouldn't i wouldn't have been able to afford it if i had gone through the builder it was a bit frustrating because it was partially i was a bit sort of like well it's their sort of fault like they've done you know but i was too close to handover and i just i just wanted to get it done um and it was a bit stressful so i just wanted to get it done and get the final inspection done and um oh. So are we able to ask questions like from comments yet, Jeff? I don't know Let's how, do it. how. Did you want to ask this one? Well, I thought Jen had a good one, actually. Yeah, this, um, is, this yeah, is Jen. This one here. Did financing the final loan require it to be rented at a certain amount to get approval? Great question. So I so said, did financing the final, final loan require it to be rented a certain amount? Yeah. So did it need to be at $400 a week or what was the minimum? It could, yeah, did it need oh, that? I did need to get a rental letter. I did. So I provided them with the initial one of 435 and that's what got the total amount needed, but I didn't have to provide. Um, we're not, we're not giving, we're not letting you the key or until we see a lease agreement or anything like that. So oh, I think nice. that was the minimum and I had to get, and they, they lent that amount to me, but luckily we ended up renting it for more, but um yeah. The, re yeah. the, re the reason the, the reason a bank will take that is because if absolute worst case scenario, if, if they if they needed to take possession of the property, they yeah. would they would be able to. That, that's what the market would typically would generally pay for that. So yeah. they'd be able to say they'd be able to sell it at, at, with that sort of thing. So that's why they. Well, that's right, and I think that's what yeah. Because I, I had a letter signed from a property manager who I was was with, and. Um, yeah, and they just said, based on these plans, the location, I asked them to be quite conservative because I didn't want to shoot myself in the foot. Just I just was trying to be a little bit cautious on that. That way, worst case, if it was a little bit extra or whatever, then I'm winning sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, the, it all got approved based on 435 a week, which that just amazing though, that extra, oh, the saving of the, you know, 50K, but then an extra 50 bucks a week, 45 bucks a week in rent, it's a huge difference to making me service that. And also probably because it was a full bedroom, they thought, you know, better resale value as well. Absolutely. But benefit of hindsight and with the, the bits of issues that you had around financing, would you still have asked them to be conservative or would you have been like, ah, make it as high as possible? Now with probably a little bit more knowledge just about it all, I'd probably be like, now I'm talking to a few property managers and like, hey, can you be a bit more like on the higher side? Like, but Generous but still realistic. Exactly, because I feel like you don't want to. It's good to be conservative to a degree, because in case things change, it's good to have a buffer, as they say, as you say. So, yeah, yeah. The the two things I'm getting from from this uh, sort of first purchase is, um, and and I think it's a feature of your story, is relationships and resourcefulness, because yeah. you've got you've got some. I mean, it's just crazy that the next door neighbor you were just chatting. Like, how did that come about? Like, how did you it just happen to be an engineer? Yeah, like, yeah. How, how did you even start that conversation? Like, what, how did that? Well, we were pretty. Like... So, what happened was when I bought when I bought my pl the block, the house that at next door was um, a repossession from the bank, oh. and I was like, "Ooh, I wonder if I can get mine built, build, get the equity out, and buy next door because it's a repossession." I was like, this is really, and it was a really nice house 
on a bigger block than mine. Anyway, I was up there one day just driving past and having a look and I saw I saw someone unpacking their car and I'm like, oh, how have I missed this? Because <laughs> it was all done, I, well, I don't think it was online. And um, I just knocked on his door. I was like, well, this could go one of two ways. And um, and I just explained a bit, bit about myself and... Um, and he said, "Yeah, well, if you ever if you ever need help with anything, I've, my brother's an engineer. If you ever need him to, we just got talking, and he just like it was just right place, right time, I think, and a bit, bit of luck there. Um, and he just said, if you ever need help with anything, um, and well, because he's like, oh, do you live locally? I said, no, nah, I'm like two and a half hours away. He goes, well, I'm more than happy to just watch over it all for you if it's you know keep you like he'd, he'd send me photos of stuff, and I'd be like, oh, that's really good. Thanks for the update." And yeah, we just got talking and um, throughout the whole build on Facebook and just I drive up there and talk to him and um, it just happened to be the right place, right time, I think, which was pretty, which I know doesn't happen all the time. Um, so I, I'm very grateful for that because I don't really know what I would have done if I hadn't have had that contact. I probably I don't want to know. Um, and uh, yeah, he just said, look, if you need help, I've got people that I that, you know, work in property and stuff like that. So if you ever need help with anything and I took him up on that offer and it was a good thing to do. So, yeah. yeah. So, so that was, yeah, f- fantastic sort of, um, I mean, you sort of took it, took a bit of a chance. You made it happen. So, I mean, should, let's, we'll, we'll sort of, I mean, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're at the 50 minute mark. So let's go to, uh, I'd love to hear about number two, but let's, let's sort of fast, fast forward through to what, did, what, did, what lessons did you learn going from two uh, into three? Like what, what did you, or is the second property into your third? What, what sort of research did you did you start putting into your third property? And let's let's kind of leapfrog that. Yeah. Um, so the biggest three? things I learned from number two to three was doing a bit more due diligence in regards to council stuff, like building permits <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, um, and just being a bit more business minded rather than emotion and. Um, again, number two was a little bit less emotion than number one, but probably a little bit too much as well, you know. Um, and then, yeah, number three was more, right, the number stuck up. It's a, it's a the house, you know, I can add value to it. Like, it's not the most prettiest house. Like, it's nice, but, like, it, I, there's stuff I can do to it. And I was thinking more, okay, how is this going to make me money? I was very, mm-hmm. like, okay, I can do X, Y, Z. I did a bit more due diligence in terms of like previous sales. Okay, well, that one sold for 450 and it was a 322. Mine's a 422 and I'm paying less. And there's also ways I can add value to it down the track. It's in a good street, it's on a bigger block. Just I was started to be a lot more, yeah, doing a lot more due diligence in that sense because of the lessons that I learned from number one and also number two. Um, number two had, you know, benefits as well but then I was like how can I perfect you know get better at this and I'm and there's, and there's some things that for number four I'll do better as well so I feel like it's just a learning game as you go of course so for, and for anyone that's that's just at the start of the journey now and listening to to what Josh is saying for me one of the biggest takeaways that I really get from that is do everything you can to make number one as as good as possible but at the end of the day if it's not perfect that's okay as long as you yeah. take those lessons from going at the end of it, and this is actually a really good thing to do. It's what I always used to do is I'd sit down and we'd literally pull the project apart and go, what, what did we do really well? And we want to take yeah. to the next one. And what do we stuff up that we're going to go? We never want to take that to the next one with us. That can just stay at that project. Oh, and it absolutely. sounds like you, you do that perfectly, Josh. And, and now you've got to <clears throat> buying number three. And by the sounds of it, you firmly got that investor hat on. The, the emotional side of it's out the window. It's like, how can I add value? What do the numbers look like? What am I really looking for? But if you hadn't have done number one, even though it might not have been perfect, you wouldn't have got to that level of confidence. No. And I think especially because number three was very different for me. I don't know if um, I told you, Todd, but because it was interstate. So I'm in Victoria. Mm-hmm. So the first two were in regional Victoria. So then going into state was way out of my comfort zone. And... There was a little bit of fear there, but I, it pushed me. I need. I was like, okay, Josh, this is really, this is really different for you. I, I, I just like, okay, there was no emotion there. I can't see it. There's just no. There, it was just like you said, investor hat on, and mm-hmm. I made sure it, I got down to the street, like which I know is huge, a huge thing as well. I did a lot more research on owner occupiers versus you know tenancy. 
housing commission, just all those things that I didn't know for number one. And I'm very lucky that I haven't been caught out in bad situations yet with mm. those types of things. And um, so I've been, you know, so I was like, I've learned my lesson. And um, I just being a bit more nitty gritty, but also having a really good property manager help me as well. Be like, okay, this is what you also need to do. Call council, ask for this, ask for that. And having a good solicitor who was based in the state that had been doing it for many years as well and guiding me and saying, Josh, you need to make sure you check this, 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 and this before you put an offer in, check X, Y, Z, all these things. And it's now I've got my, I just write all this stuff down. So when I go to buy number four, I can be like, all right, bam, 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 tick off the list, make it a quick, smoother process as well. So, what did, um, how, how did you get to meet these, uh, meet a lot of these people? Uh, the, in the interstate or everywhere? Or, or just in general, like, yeah, like you've, for our time, you've, you've met sort of builders, you've met, um, I, I suppose the builders through the agent, but you, you met your broker after a couple you sort of chatted to, you met this property manager, you met the solicitor. How did you, did you sort of ask for referrals or yeah, what was the process to meet these people? Oh, well, it's all I feel like I can answer that one for you, Josh, but I'm yeah. keen to see what you say. I'll probably know the answer too, but yeah. <laughs> well, just a lot of trial and error. I, and also the, these groups have been like, have been really helpful. So yep. pretty much all the people I've met have come through, through this, through this group, except the initial purchase. I wasn't on here then, I don't think. And, but then so my broker I found on here, I think I put a post on a few years ago on Christmas Eve and he come, he reached out to me. We had a very long phone call and we've been, I've been working with him for a few years. And then I was just about um, to say, what do you think about that, Jeff? Hey. Oh, it definitely, it definitely happens. I mean, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, we, we can't completely stop all of it, but yeah, I mean, we, yeah, but um, yeah, that's, I mean, what, what, um, so you, you, through Ozprop, but um, have, are you on something like Property Chat as well, like that sort of forum, or just literally? I am. I'm, I'm on that one, and I'm on a few development ones, and I'm on um, oh, what's the name of it? Um, the the guy who's admin, his name's Manish, I think. I'm on that one. Manish Property, property Forum Australia. Yeah, that, one's, name that one's that one's really group. really helpful, and my property manager's on there a lot as well. Um, Thank you. Vicky, yep, and she is, yeah, <laughs> she's phenomenal. And um, I wish I could clone her. She, and then um, I'm also on, I'm on, I'm on PK's one as well, which is really, really, really helpful as well. I've met, I've connected with some really, 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 really good people on there as well. So yeah, and then I guess when meeting those people initially, they then, I then talk to them about what my goals are, and then they go, oh, I know this person, and it's just keeps going like a like a family tree like it just keeps going so yeah it's um Kevin's then, bacon. six yeah. degrees of separation or two degrees of kevin bacon or whatever it is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i still think a big part of of it for, for you josh is is the same way that i think all three of us know you I, i'm pretty sure you just randomly messaged me one day and was like hey blah blah, blah i got this question like the, the fact that you're an opportunist enough to be like, I don't know someone, but like, mm. hi, I'm Josh. I'm really nice and friendly and I'm super inquisitive. Like, can we chat? That That's a wonderful quality to have. And I think yeah. if more people had that, they'd probably be closer to where they want to be. Mm. Uh, I, I, it's actually, thank you for reminding me. I just didn't even think of that, but I, I do do that a lot. And I'm very, I might, I'll message heaps of different people because I like to, I like to ask lots of questions so I can help make good decisions. And I'm, I think I'm not, I'm not afraid to just message someone I don't know and be like, hey, I, you, I saw you commenting on this. I just wanted to get your, wanted to have a chat. And I think that helps with my job as well because where I have to go out and chase things. And so I don't, you know, I don't like to just wait for things to come to me because that, that's just not mm. going to happen. <laughs> so you got to go out and chase it. And I, you know, we'll do what I need to do to make that happen. And it's, I think it's really good to talk to people that just different people. I, I think that's, um, that's the whole fun of it. And I think, uh, I, know, I know Todd, that's probably part of the, that you would have liked to unpack a little bit more on, on P&P, property and pizza, pizza and property. Um, but, but I think that is, is, uh, is one of your super, super human, not super human, your super talents. What's the word? Um, superpowers. There we go. Yeah, super oh, superpowers. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Superpowers, super superpowers that's, that's because um, it's it's something that that helps me a lot in my and it's not necessarily about me but I think that 
I, 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 the more people I sort of see that have become successful, like even Todd, like yourself, you're, you're quite similar. And, and even sort of other, like people like Jenny Mole and, and sort of yeah. others that I see in the community as well. It's the ones that keep popping up again and again that you'll see eventually they might not, they might sort of, it might take them 10 or 15 questions to get the, to get the point or get to the thing. But it's, it's those ones that you keep seeing popping up. And as much as I, I try and sort of be nice and sort of not say, oh, could you do a search on that? Because if that question has been asked like 14 times before, <laughs> yeah. three times in the last three hours. But um, yeah, so I shouldn't discourage that too much. But I think that that, that is the thing that, underlies a lot of your success really just saying mm. okay what can i learn how do i put myself out there what can i do with this situation because not a lot of people do that they they just somebody i used to do a lot on linkedin just understand yeah. where i wanted to be in my career and just ask a lot of questions and um yeah you're going about that's awesome. just in case someone's good. listening thinking yeah i can do that can i say one of the things that makes it in, in my opinion successful for people like jeff like josh is and and i want to say myself as well if i can arrogantly include myself in that you definitely can yeah. is, it is a, a genuine curiosity if you're just going to mass message people a template of crap don't be surprised when you don't really get much back. But if if you've actually got real question behind it and you're actually trying to connect with someone, your strike rate's going to go through the roof because people are people. And if you remember that, it's it's going to work a lot better for you, I think. Yeah. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. I, I did actually I did have a template, Todd, for, for my LinkedIn messaging, but but at the same time, was my, my intent behind it wasn't necessarily to sort of get like I, I thought about what did I want to how and how can I potentially add value to these to the to the person? It's not just it's not it's not all about me because and, and yeah. I feel you're you're probably similar now, Todd. Like you probably get heaps of people message you and say, Oh, how do I do investing or how do I do X, Y, and Z? And I, I as much as I love to try and get back to people, it's just it's very hard. So yeah. if you're gonna reach out to busy people, try and make it as easy for them to respond as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred mm. percent. But yeah, yeah. Definitely- yeah, you're good at that, Josh. No, that's yeah. good, man. I, I think as well, like not being afraid to just ask for help and like, you know, because you can't achieve it by yourself. And the more people you've got, I think it's better. So, yeah. Ask, ask, Something- you, ask you the dumb question or the, the yeah, silly question. Well, I, I was just about to say uh, a question that's definitely not a dumb one. Uh, if if we can bring it up, Jeff, one from uh, Tammy and Ben. Moa, Maha, I please forgive me. I'm, I'm sure I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah, how you structure this, your, oh, you go. I thought this would be a good one, mate, because you're definitely going to need help answering this question for the first time. How did you structure your purchase in terms of buying in your name or under trusts to ensure you don't max out with serviceability in the eyes of the banks? So I, I have a combination of trusts and my <clears throat> personal name. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I guess in terms of servicing, I've just been very strict on what yields I'm, what I'm willing to accept. And I won't I'll only buy cash flow positive. I'm also, I don't want to sound cocky again, but I love negotiating with the bank to get a cheaper interest rate. To oh, yeah. Cash flow. That's not cocky though. That's smart because we yeah, <laughs> tell us about your strategy around that. We'll get to this Absolutely. Answer. Yeah, but um, yeah. So that's what. So I've got a, I've got a combination of my personal name. So I've tried to keep my personal debt as low as possible, and um, start buying in trusts to also not also because I I want the bank to sort of look at me as more of you know as a serious investor, not just Josh. I want them to start going because obviously, as you know, lenders we don't want to take on too much risk. So to me, it was also about eliminating risk. And also protecting myself for my future and you know all those kinds of things. So I've yeah, now moving forward, my my personal debt is as minimal as possible, and then everything will be under a you know um, a, a trust and proprietary limited. So yeah. And yeah, and uh, as always, uh, seek uh, chat to chat to your broker, chat to your accountant, chat to your exactly. uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is because, not financial yeah, advice, please take independent professional financial advice. Yeah, we need we need that little cop thing that Joe brings up. I, I, <laughs> yeah. prod, I prod him. I'm like, yeah. Joe, put that damn thing up. No, I, I think it's yeah. I think ultimately you're talking about what what works for you. I mean, it's um yeah. Go on, Todd. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, was I talking? You were about, about to say something profound. I was like, oh, I, I want to. Oh no. I 
No, no, I'm I'm fiddling with my pen listening to you guys. Actually, that's oh, a lie. I'm fiddling with the model plane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I think the thing about it is you really want to understand what, like you said, you want to get to double digits property, like at least probably, like you said, 15 or 13 or 14. I think to, to get to that sort of stage, you probably need to consider your options sort of quite far in advance. And of yeah. course, circumstances change. Like somebody can say, oh, I only want five and they get, they get the property bug and they say, oh, look, actually, I might want 50 instead of five. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you sort of then you sort of have to change where you, where you find the plane. But as much as you can get clear on what you want to do up front, and then the way you can really? somebody just did a laugh reaction. Oh, was, you need an AFSL. Oh, pro, yeah. But for pizza and property, off to fly his plane. Australian Flying Services um, license. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I know Australian Financial Services license. Yeah. <laughs> somebody said yeah. Sloan King of Property. Who is this? <laughs> yeah, I can't see names. This is Facebook user all the time. Unless I open yeah. up my phone, so I keep looking down. Yeah, that's all right. I, I do. I have another tab. But yeah, let's. Um, uh, I, I, I want to hear more about what what number four is going to look like. You, you don't. I would, yeah, let's kind of one. If you, I don't know if you're comfortable. Otherwise, I got a whole bunch of other questions. I'm sure, Todd does as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And can, well. can I just expand on Jeff's question a little there? Can you tell us about number four, but how it's going to get you to number five? What about number fifteen. <laughs> uh, so. Going down that road again of how I was saying for number three of the trying to find something that's a good egg, but I can, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of years if you get in between tenancies where I can have a bit of cash behind me once it's, you know, uh, and start doing some adding value to it. Um, I'm trying to be a bit more like I've had a lot of luck with buying and building, but I think that whole adding value thing I think is a really good strategy that I for my third one, it's worked really well. I've only had it three months and it's gone up quite significantly. But I also bought it way under market value. So it's, you know, two things were going for me there. So I think number four, again, same thing. I'm going to try and hit the ground running as, and build those relationships. And it might take me a little bit longer, but I, it, it will happen because you need, and then once I've got those relationships, I'll then start the hunt for, um, to find that one that meets because I've got my I'm strict on my price. I've got my my yield what's that your, I want. What's your price and what's your yield? I think I know where you're looking, but yeah, what's the price and yield? I'm interested. Ideally, no less than sort of six point eight percent, which is hard, but it's doable. If I can get more, then that's icing on the cake. But I and you're talking six point eight as a straight rental. You're not going like roomy house or granny or anything like that. That's just straight rental, and then, but if I'm I'm trying to look for areas of sorry properties that I can, you know, look at how I can you know, develop that down the track. Like, for example, adding a granny flat, like having side access gotcha. on it, for example. So that's yep. what number three was. It's got potential down the track. You know, it's all got it's a huge block, and for side access, I and how I can't remember the the, the type of zoning that it is, but the council said that it can be subdivided. So we're talking, really talking R twenty. Is it? Are we? Are we? Uh, are we over that that neck of the woods or something like that? I can't remember. I'm hopeless with all that stuff. But like <laughs> they they said, it's a really good. So I was like, okay, that's how long term. When I've got a bit more capital behind me, I can start increasing those yields. But to begin with, they're my basic numbers, and they've touched wood. They've helped me continue to borrow um, because I can still handle these rate rises. There's still be cash flow positive. Um, which to me, I feel like that's a win-win. Um, my price, I'm trying to keep it sub 400 if I can. Ideally, lower would be good. Just, but it's hard. Just like there's heaps on there for you know, 360, 370, but they're going for a lot more. <laughs> that's the only. Yeah, you got to you, you got to be careful. Um, if if you're looking where I think you may be looking. You just got to be. You got to be a little bit careful in terms of the. Uh, just, I, I'd probably if you if you're going to, I'd fly over there if you can, if you haven't already. Just, to, yeah. Just to understand because yeah, that's what that's what Joe was on the weekend. Um, can Can you give us the state just so everyone's not going? Did I miss it. that part and rewinding it? Sure. W A. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, w A. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was place. hoping to do Queensland again, but. Where I bought, I like there's definitely, I know a lot of other people are buying there at the moment, but mm-hmm. for me and my goals, I think it's just a little bit out of my, what I'm wanting. I think I think it's a little bit hot for me personally. I know not for everyone else. Whereas I think WA, I think there's um, a lot of opportunity um, and I've, 
yeah, connected with some really good people already over there. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and pushing a little bit more on the how's four going to get you to five? Is is that like you're going to add some value and then do like an equity release or what, what, what are you thinking? Or is it more so relying on picking the market well enough to, to do that lift for you? Uh, probably a little bit of both, but mostly relying on adding value. So I've found a couple that um, look like they're obviously pending building and pest, but look really good in good awesome. locations. And then, you know, the kitchen upgrades, new carpet, you know, just stuff like that, new bathroom upgrade stuff, but it's still, it's completely functional, safe, mm-hmm. and, you know, someone would actually want to live in it, but there's stuff that you could significantly, like when you're looking at rentals, I'm like, okay, that one's renovated and it's getting, you know, an extra $120 a week rent. So mm-hmm. this is an example. Um, and so I'm like, okay, over time, hopefully there's a little bit of equity there. If, if, if you know, if, if not, I've got that option to manufacture that growth as well. And, you know, so, yeah, that's sort of what I'm thinking for number five in conjunction with my other properties as well because one of them is on P&I as well, so, which that works for me um, and it's still cash flow positive. So I was like, well, that's to me that makes sense um, and I can then release equity from that. Like I've still, I've got, I try to keep a multiple options at one stage so to, to, to accommodate for things changing, if that makes sense, to help me get yeah. to that next level. Yeah, perfect sense. Yeah, cool, man. This is um, oh, we we did an answer. So this is from Brian, who may have tuned in a little bit later. Brian, you weren't watching from the start. What's going on? He said, "Are you currently renting, Josh?" He is. He moved out three months ago, four months ago. Three months ago. Yep, I'm renting. Yeah. And um, is your portfolio currently positive? Um, we're talking positive cash flow, positively geared. What's the? Uh, so yeah. probably probably saying positive cash flow. I'd say just to keep. At at this stage, it is. Because I've been very thank lucky that I've been able to negotiate, not all months, but most most uh, most months um, on my interest rate, which has been <laughs> which has been good. So I've been now, able. Um, to- what's what what's your strategy for that? Because I think that's that, that people might be interested in that. How do you unpack? How do you get a oh, discount just, pretty much every month? I've got a few people on like that work at the bank that like I like it's only a, it's, it's a non bank lender. And um, of course, built some relationships with people that are that the loan specialists, and I've got like their direct lines to them, which I which is fantastic. And I just call them up and be like, "All right, this is my situation now this month because it's always changing every month." I'm like, "Hey, I paid a little bit. I just chucked a bit of extra money on here. Oh, hey, according to you know this website, it's saying my house is worth this much." And I just try to always be like how I'm. <laughs> not that I, not that the bank cares probably, but I don't know. I always try to sort of sell myself to the bank every month <laughs> and like promote myself. And I said to them, I want to keep, I want to keep, you know, I want to keep buying. I said, you know, I'm going to keep, I'm young. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to make you a lot of money. Like and they just, they probably just think you're an absolute idiot. Like we don't care, but I don't know. It's worked. And I just had a chat to them about what I'm trying to achieve. And I said, come on, help. I said, I said to one lady, She's actually left now, which is really annoying because she was great. I said to her, I was like, Kate, I am, this is, I can see this happening. I need you to see this happening as well. Help me get this across the line. We're on on Team Josh. That's that's what it is, though. Like, you you, you kind of, and I think you do that, you do that so well and not, not intentionally. It's just like you have people saying, like, I really like this bloke. And I really like this person. I want to see him do well and, and see him succeed. So yeah, and I think, again, I think it comes it's down called to charisma. Mindset. Yeah, <laughs> again, I think it comes down to the mindset. Like if I can visualize myself doing something and it's going to achieve my goals, I'll do whatever I can to help the people that I need to help me get there to help convince them as well. And um, yeah, it, it, it touch wood. I've I've been very lucky that I've, I've been my rates are quite good, which still gives me that positive cash flow overall, which is really good. Which means isn't I can a, continue to borrow. Isn't that a Jim Rohn quote? Not to, to circle back to the quotes, but the, you can have anything you want in life as long as you help everyone else get what they want. Mister Sloan, I'm disappointed, mate. You're not. You know, Zig, Zig Ziglar. The, Zig the, the, Ziglar. Yeah, oh, close. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, listen to probably hundreds of podcasts of Zig Ziglar. Like he um. His, his son, brilliant. Tom Fiedler, took over and, I don't know, it just doesn't have the same kind of chutzpah as, as Zig does, which is tough because how do it's you... pretty how do you big shoes to fill. 
a huge chills. Like, yeah, but um, anyway, we, we could talk. We, we talk <laughs> yeah, over yeah. coffee <laughs> over personal development. Um, there's so many questions come through. I need to, I need to kind of pay the uh, Yeah, well. can, can I actually just jump in with tones? I don't know if you've got that up there, Josh, but yeah, no, I just I wanted to say he, Brian was here from the start, but of course, I already had listened to the Pizza and Property. I hope it's yeah. The tones one is that the future events one? Yeah, the Josh, what what future events, life events you consider that might impact the the speed slash progress of your investing journey? I'm assuming Tone's talking about like marriage, kids, big holidays, things like that. Uh, that's a good question. I look, I, I haven't really put much time into like I'm single <laughs> and uh, I haven't really put much time into thinking about all that stuff like at all really like you know kids marry it's something that i definitely want in the future absolutely plenty of time so, yeah plenty of time. I, I think that's what i sort of told myself like i'm i think down the track i'm hoping that when that does come i'm in a position where i'm pretty well set up so i guess mm. i'm i'm sort of using my 20s to you know really push myself and sort of not, I do try and have a bit of a life, but I'm just very like work hard, play later sort of thing. And, um, and I guess try and do as much as I can now while I have little, how do I say this without sounding like, you know, kids, I don't, not that kids set you back, of course, aren't they amazing? But, and uh, I guess I try to go, well, I've got this opportunity now where I don't have anyone, I don't have any really responsibilities. I don't have people relying on me. Like now's the time to make mistakes. Like, you know what I mean? Like make mistakes, take risks, figure it all, figure, figure as much as you can out, obviously. And then when the time does come and I'm ready to, you know, settle down, <laughs> as they say, I, I, I think I'm hoping by then I will be in a much stronger position as well where I can, it doesn't matter if I, you know, um, you know, have to put a few things on hold because I've already done the hard work sort of thing. I hope that sort of answers the question, but yeah. Personally, I, I think you're right on the money there as well. Like right now, what am I? I'm 36, 37, something like that. I love being in bed at nine o'clock and like just chilling out with Bianca and the dog. But rewind 10 years ago, I couldn't have thought of anything worse. I wanted to be out until 4 a.m. And I think you'd, if, if you try and live that that older life when you're not ready for it, it's just, you, what's the point? Like if you, but if you're doing what you're doing now, man, I think you're absolutely on the right path to then have when you are happy to actually kind of settle down, you're going to have everything set up around you. So it's so much smoother as well. Exactly. And I think right now, if I were to like be completely honest, like if I were to have kids and all that now, I, I wouldn't be, I'd be, I'd be happy with that, of course, but I wouldn't be happy where I'm at personally with all my other goals, which I think is a really which is really important to be able to be the best version of myself as a, you know, down the track and all that as well. So I, I want to mm. be, I want to get myself to a position where I'm content with me and my goals to then mm. be, to then be able to put all my focus into that next chapter. And I'm no, I'm not near there yet. So <laughs> I've got a long way to go. So, but in saying that though, <laughs> holidays and that, like I, I, I have done stuff. So. Done stuff. Yeah. All right. We probably should get to. Yeah, I, I got to figure out how to how to work this more more seamlessly. But I'm. Uh, yeah. There's a question there that we might we might poke a little bit at from Nat about which part of Perth. But have a think about if you, you. We don't have to talk about that if you don't want. We can just share the region, or we don't have to talk about it at all. I got heaps more questions, so keep dropping the questions, team, and entertain entertain yourselves. And in the meantime, we have Mr. Commercial Polizzi. Just gonna actually present that. Do, 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 do. Seamless. <laughs> Extremely. Commercial <laughs> property offers the highest cash flow in Australian property investing, offering exceptionally higher yields than residential. Now, we're talking 8 to 10% net yields. That's cash after all expenses, not this 2 to 6% gross that we see in the residential space. So for those that are starting out on their commercial investing journey, it can be exciting, but it's also a step not to be taken lightly. The expertise of a commercial buyer's agent can pay dividends to help you secure that high cash flow and high growth potential property. 
And this is why we recommend Steve Polisi of Polisi oh, Property. Oh, oh. With over six years' experience in the space, oh, Steve God. has over 1,200 property transactions under his belt. He has seen oh, it all God. and knows the best locations oh, right for growth. In a previous life, Steve was a chartered mechanical and structural engineer, so he draws on his mathematical and analytical skills that he's developed well, to break down what works best in commercial property. As with engineering, same goes with commercial property. It's based primarily on the numbers. So if you're curious mm -hmm. about diversifying into commercial property, you have access to $100,000 in cash, I think you lost the volume there, Jeff. Yeah, that's a, that's all right. I uh, I think I played the wrong one. Oh, uh, I can I can just end that for you. If you're curious about investing and have a hundred thousand dollars cash, then talk to Steve Polisi today. Go to stevepolisi.com or policyproperty.com.au. Something along so those smooth. lines and talk to Steve. So there you go. Perfect. No, but I, I think I played the out. wrong one. As in, that's the one that uh, yeah, that Steve Steve McKnight's. Uh, Said we sh we should we gave us a bit yeah gave us a bit of an on air kind of uh, coaching session about because we're using some clips from various movies and whatnot so but yeah oh, so, okay yeah that's that's it what made he made me yeah, want to watch Forrest Gump yeah I know which is <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but anyway so Josh can we talk about number four can we talk location are you are you comfortable sharing or what are you yeah. you don't have this exact location just give us a region of Perth if you. Let's bring yeah, it up. I've, I've been um, I've been looking uh, around sort of like uh, Port Kennedy area, but it's a bit expensive now. But like Greenfields, um, around sort of those areas, like I, I'm going to have to be very careful with my like due diligence because I like, I know there's certain parts that are a bit more low socioeconomic. But I, from what I've done so far, my research and talking to a few people that invest in surrounding suburbs. Um, like it just, it, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to to um, to do well there, and it all fits in with my budget in terms of you know, um, like, yeah, my yields and everything as well. So it's just a matter of being a little bit more, you know, yeah, getting a bit more nitty gritty with the streets and that. So which will come with getting a good property manager. So yeah, there's, there there is there's some great. We had um, had Jared from. Investors Edge, don't get paid for saying Jared. We had him on the show, and we're we, we're, we're having another um, Perth property manager on on the show who yeah, Joe and I chat to pretty regularly. So I think Joe might have been, might might have had a catch up with Ash last um, couple on on the weekend or Friday. So excited to yeah, because everybody's talking about Perth. So yeah. I um yeah, I want to understand more about sort of her sort of because yeah, she's been there a while. But onto my, do you have any? I, I got some questions. To, uh, Todd, but have you got any burning questions you want to ask before? I, I was just about to ask you because I've talked to a lot of people about this and I wanted your opinion on it, Josh. Like some people have looked at Perth and kind of gone, well, the whole country went kaboom and Perth kind of went kapow, like a little bit happened. Like is, is that's the sign that it's 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 a dud, whereas other people have got the view of, no, that's the sign that that's the place to be because kaboom is coming. Like what I'm assuming you're of the latter – what makes you confident with that? Well, I think that I don't know if it sounds correct or not, but I do think that like past performance isn't always a reflection of future performance. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, if you had told me to buy a, region, you know, buy a house in regional Victoria 10 years ago, I would have thought, no, no, you're going to buy in metropolitan Melbourne. Like, you know, I hmm. think that there's, it all comes down to like, you know, your data and it, it if, 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 if it's in, if the proof is in the pudding, if it's if it's in writing that it's got X, Y, Z or whatever, whatever you're looking for, like everyone's different and what they think is good and bad data, of course, I think you sometimes just got to go, well, it makes sense. And if it fits your goals and you're not, you know, over leveraging yourself, I think, I, I think that's, that, that, that's good because uh, to me, I was like, well, I, I saw that Perth had grown at the time, not as much as, you know, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Adelaide, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it's also so affordable. And I do think that to a degree, like, and I could be very wrong, and I appreciate if people think differently, but to a degree, affordability does have to come into it, I think, to it eventually, like at some point. And I, I think that 
Perth, from you know, talking to different people, doing my own research, I think that it has become a very diverse economy than what there's that stigma of mining and once mining busts, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go bust. And I, I think there's a lot more going for it now. And I think that we, 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 you know, we need to look into that as well, not just, oh, what, okay, this happened in the past, so it's going to happen again. That's not always, that's not mm. always the case. So to yeah. me, I, yeah. I think okay, that's so you, you, you're comfortable yeah. with the numbers because it's an entry level kind of um, place at the moment, but it's still affordable. And you're looking at it going, the economy is diverse enough that even if mining does take a bit of a hit, you feel that it's got a, it's, its own kind of self sustaining economy anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I, I also, I, I always try, I don't like to over leverage myself. So, and I'm in it for the long term again, because of my age, I plan to hold for a long time. So, yep. If if it goes down, I've diverse like you know I've got other properties that have my LVRs are very low, so I, mm-hmm. I've got offers in place to account for things not always going to plan if that happens, mm. because you know there's only so much we can plan for um, to a degree as well. So you know I think that if I'm going in, the data's matching up, and I'm doing all the due diligence that I need to do to ensure that the purchase is achieving my goals. I feel like there's going to be plenty of reasons to go, oh, let's not do it. But again, what if it works? Like, and I know that, yeah. that I, know you're, I know you're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars, but um, I think, yeah. I, and I think, I think it's got a shocking amount of potential. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm, I think yeah, the, I um, it up. there's a lot of fours in the prices I can see as well. I've never looked at Port Kennedy before. But I see what you're talking yeah. about with affordability. But sorry, Josh, uh, J- Jeff, I just cut you off there, mate. JJ, JJ. Um, the the thing, that, yeah, the thing I sort of see with um, like Port Kennedy was Port Kennedy is actually quite, I'd, I'd say it's exp- somewhat expensive for the area. Yeah. Um, but but the thing that I like about your strategy is is that it can work in most markets, like reg- regardless of whether it's Perth or whether it's. Townsville, whether it's Orange or whether it's um, Overon, which Overon's probably not, not, not the yeah. So it sort of works. Um, the Sounds like why, Transformers live. Yeah, well, Overon sort of in, out in out in regional <laughs> New South Wales, not too far in the sticks, but it's it's uh, wasn't up and coming. But the yeah, you sort of you, you you look at the particular property and really understand what the value is in that particular market, and you're sort of saying you're somewhat de-risking your investment because. Whereas uh, I think where, or not I think, but I get the feeling where some people may go wrong, well, not may go wrong, but may they, they may sort of buy there and say, oh, my property's not growing but or hasn't grown now. Like this place is supposed to be the next big thing. Um, is that they, they buy the, they, they, they don't understand what the value is. They just say, oh, like it's low fours. That's really cheap. Yeah. Like that's affordable, et cetera, et cetera. But what they don't realize is for that particular area, they probably paid maybe ten, fifteen, twenty thousand 20,000 more than what they should have paid for that particular mm. house because, because people are, people are just sort of, I'm, I'm seeing it myself. Um, like I, I was yeah, just chatting to agents and I sort of say, Oh, you, you, you ring them up and like, Oh, what's, where's, where's the price sitting? And they're like, Oh, I've already got free offers and it's 20 K over asking. I'm like, I don't know. I just think yeah. uh, I, I, I don't, I don't see value even considering an offer at that price. And, and no. it's just interesting to see what, where that where that sort of lands, and I mean they, they may they'll probably go okay as as long as they got but I don't you're not the type of person I feel that would do that you would actually say you'd build a relationship like you did with your third purchase yeah so I think hundred yeah. percent and I, and making sure that like I, I you know not overcapitalizing making sure that I'm try I try my best to try and sit below you know sales in the area because then I've like I've, like it's like I was saying before I've got multiple things going for me. In case some if some, if something drops off, I've got that to help me out. So I I, I don't go in going, oh yeah, uh, that looks nice. Like you said, oh just because it's four hundred grand, it's affordable for me, but it's not might be really expensive for the area, like you said. So it's mm. yeah. But um, we'll wait and see. I'm yeah, still doing a lot of research and just getting all the finances sorted and everything. Just you know, trying to revalue everything, the other houses, and trying to see where we stand there and, you know, getting all the all the behind the scenes stuff done and um, building some connections with some property managers at the moment. So, yeah. You're going to fly over? 
Uh, I, I, I may, yeah, we'll see. We, 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 I may do that. It might be if I can get some manual leave. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, I personally would strongly recommend boots on the ground. If you're not using a yeah. BA and you're doing it yourself, oh, yeah. 100%. Like I used to sell to people that would not do it. And when my job was being the sales agent, <clears throat> that you don't lie, but you might not tell the full story. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, because that's not their job. Like do no. Yeah, do, do not trust everything the sales agent says to give you the whole story. No, hundred percent. No, if I if I can get over that, I would prefer to because it's you know buying in Queensland was one thing, but this is way a bit more out of my comfort zone as well. So yeah, I think that would be good for me because I do like I'm a type of person that likes to be like I think that's why my two it was hard for me to go out of Victoria because both those two properties I was there for everything and seeing everything, so it was really helpful and it gave me a bit of reassurance. So I think if I can get over there, that would be really good. Just, just do the red mm. eye, like or do the do the late do the late Friday afternoon and fly back, um, fly back Sunday morning or, or maybe Monday morning, whatever it is. And if yeah. you have to take one day off, I mean, sure, you, yeah, up to you. But um, what I was going to say, there's a couple of questions I think could be re- hopefully really useful for those uh, watching on home. What, what I'm interested to know, what can somebody who's just starting learn from your type of investing? Like if you could impart some knowledge, what would that knowledge be? Um, I think, oh, that's a, how do I answer that one? Um, less than five or 10 minutes. No? <laughs> I, I think just if, if, even if you're not my age, I think you just got to, just building relationships and, and just trusting your gut sometimes to, to take risks and, I think I always say to myself what the worst case scenario is and 99% of the time it's not that bad and it really never ends up happening. Um, and the benefits for me just outweigh the risk and, and, and the worst case scenarios, like always. I just I just keep telling myself that and just eventually I believe it. So, yeah, if, I, if it's one thing I could do, just, just do it, <laughs> honestly. Like, and do what's best for yourself, obviously. But if, you, if you're wanting to do it and you, there's fears, you just got to say to yourself, well, what if it goes right rather than what if not? And I think if you can try mm-hmm. and you know, talk yourself like that in a good way, I think you'll be fine. It's like your um, story at the end of the, the pod the other day, your pod with um, about the Uber driver or the taxi or whatever motor transport you're in, Todd, about is saying, well, you can't, you can't do it. I just need it. I need 100K to be able to start. And once I got that, I'm set for life. Not set for life, but I'm set to on my way. Yeah, not, yeah. he, he kind of had a, a problem for every solution, whereas um, Josh seems to have it the other way around. He's got a solution, solution for, every, for problem. every problem. Yeah, mm. that's um, that's what I like. That's what I like to say when I, it's a bit cra- not it's a bit silly sometimes when I say it. But it's like, are you the solution to the problem, or are you the problem to the solution? Like, which which one do you want to be? Mm. That's Absolutely. a good. One. Yeah, that's a really good. Yeah, all good. Have to, might have to trademark that or something. Make some rules. Yeah. <laughs> i'm not sure that's how quotes work but don't they oh, apparently they do <laughs> i just have to check i just have to figure out a way to make sure i, yeah, I I'll get get so on track there so what what is it that's um I, we've kind of spoken about what you're doing what do you what, what do you want to do next but what's um what what do you think is current i'm, I'm just you know what do you think is currently missing from your investing josh in terms of like what, like in terms of like what strategies are missing, or well, just like yeah, any in general, like do you think you you could go you could go faster, or like do you think you need to um, um, sort of buy at a higher price point? Or I'm not saying yeah. What do you think? You, yeah, if you I'm critique not, yourself, I'm pretty. I'm I'm going a little bit faster than what I had in the past, so I'm pretty okay with that, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, I guess probably the thing that I'm probably missing the most is um, just probably still that little bit of doubt sometimes. And I just need to reassure myself that it's, it's okay to want all these properties. It's okay to, you know, I think for a while there, I was like, Oh, I don't want to buy another one. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to be, you know, I want to be humble and all that. So it's, it's just a bit of that, that mindset shift, I think. But I think in terms of everything else, like I've built a, excellent foundation of people around me and a good team of professionals that I trust that give me the advice I need to make educated decisions. So in terms of all that, I'm fine. And I'm, um, I'm 
you know, I'd like to buy a little bit more. So, um, yeah, just getting that confidence back up again to probably be a bit more quick when opportunities present themselves, I think. So, yeah. I think a little bit of doubt is is probably a good thing, not not proper doubt, like should I, shouldn't I? But mm. when that little voice comes in, I, I still always remember when I was skydiving, you, before you jump out, like when you're on the plane ride up, you cannot help but think, did I fold the chute the right way? Like yes. it's just... You, you have that thought. You're like, even though you've d- done it so diligently, because it's literally your life, but you, you're always going to have a part of that. I think when you're doing anything that's as big as as what you are, so and maybe it's just more about really coming to to accept like a little bit of it's okay as long as it doesn't actually take you off the path, which clearly it's not. Yeah, and I think sometimes I've had to readjust and go, okay, no, now you're getting a bit off track, but yeah, now. Like it's, I found a healthy balance where it's like it's okay, like you said it's okay to have that little bit of question, but don't let it get too much where it stops you either. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's all it's and build, just building a good team of people. So yeah. Yeah. Do you find each time you do it, Josh, it gets it gets easier for you? Like you have less kind of that that nagging voice, or you yeah, don't find, yeah, absolutely, I did, I did. No, absolutely, and. Just being like three years ago to tell me to buy in Queensland or Perth, I would have been like, nope, don't even, don't even think about it. And mm. now I'm just like, how can I make it happen? I want to do it. And <laughs> um, like, yeah, and getting into that territory down the track of subdividing and like just understanding so much more, like it just excites me. So yeah, the first, yeah, the first time you, I mean, you've you've done a build, so. I mean, a subdivision is really just making sure you tick the council's boxes. Exactly. I mean, the the toughest part of a of a development is is, is actually the I mean, I think the toughest part is is the building part because you just there's there's a couple of unknowns there because you don't know what you, you might hit sort of some hard rock, which I mean you could get surveys to do that, um, to understand what's underneath. But yeah. yeah. Well, well, we'll probably we'll start wrapping up, people. So, if you've got any questions yeah. for Josh, because um, we've we've taken an hour and a half of his time, but but um, Todd, do you have any questions that you? The, it seems like the the comments are flowing thick and fast, and we we dropped Polizzi's ad. And what's going on, Polizzi? Are, are you like people sort of tuned out <laughs> for Polizzi? Don't tell him that. I, I don't think I've got any other questions. Like I, I think just the the biggest thing, like I summed up the other day when when we chatted, uh, Josh, it's just. I think it's your attitude, mate. And if anyone takes anything from this, the the positivity that you've got, the fact that even when you talk about when you when you were working, when you were younger, it's always in this kind of like fond memory of I made these great friends and this was really cool. Instead of like oh I had to work and, uh, and like you know, the, the, it's not only the glass is half full. You're just stoked that you've got a glass, and I think yeah. that just leads to getting more. And, and that to me is, is probably like, this hasn't been a conversation of necessarily technical skill or real in-depth strategy, but that doesn't mean that there's not a massive thing that I think every one of us can, can really learn from you, mate. And, and that's the thing personally that I think yeah. it is. No, absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and I think uh, you might have said it in, in those words, Todd, but a passion as well. Like um, mm. you talked about on your show where um, – you, you, you were sort of talking about what about shares or what about crypto? What about some sort of for, Forex trading? And you said you had a bit of a crack at FF trading during, during COVID just because you had to do something, I suppose. Yeah. And you sort of didn't, didn't find you resonated or you didn't connect with it. So yeah. you sort of weren't as successful. You didn't, yeah, I'm not saying, I don't know, you might have been successful, but you just didn't yeah, stick no, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's one thing I've learned, especially being in sales, is that you can learn to do what's required, but you can't teach passion. And I think that's a really, really true fact because if you haven't got passion for whatever you're doing, it's going to, it's going to burn out when it gets a bit challenging mm-hmm. because nothing good comes easy. So I think you've got to have that passion. Otherwise, it's, yeah, you're going to lose that pretty quickly. Mm, totally yeah. agree. I think we should, we should probably, yeah, is there any last ditch, last ditch questions that people want to ask? Because this um, investors built a, an enviable portfolio over the last couple of years and, and we'll continue to do so. So yeah. well, I'm sure we'll have to, you're probably going to have him on the show in five years, Todd, and we'll have him on in five years and I, two weeks. I don't probably. even reckon it's going to take five. I'll give it another two. He'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to set a challenge. So we're 2023, February, February yeah, 2025. 2025. 
what it was yeah. hard enough. We shouldn't do it and on air. Let's it. let's not have him on four days apart though this time. Let's let's space that <laughs> out a little bit. <laughs> we sh- I should start poaching. We- we'll start seeing each other. <laughs> but no, Absolutely. I've um, yeah. Josh. I've really appreciate. I like. I've really appreciated your sort of. You, you, Remind me, maybe this is a little cocky, a little arrogant myself, but, but I, you remind me a little bit of a younger version of me. Um, not that I'm that old anyway, but early 30s, so I'm still, still a spring chicken. But you, you sort of, you really had that sort of drive and that desire, and you, you were probably three or four or five steps ahead. At, I think I bought my first property at 25, maybe it was 24, one or the other. But I think mm-hmm. that's that's what to, to those people out there watching, whether you're, like just figure out those steps a little bit quicker, hopefully. And and I mean not than Josh, because Josh kick kick goals. When did you buy your first Todd? Twenty twenty one or something? The first one was the apartment that I bought to try and press a girl coming over from Melbourne. Uh, that oh, I was twenty one. And then the first one I actually like properly started investing was like sort of mid to late twenty seventeen. So I was what am I now? Thirty so yeah, thirty ish, something like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. But but no, like kudos to you, and it's it's just um it's it's really awesome to to have uh, have connected and, and kept in touch. And sorry if I don't always reply as quick as I could. I'll uh, I'll, I'll do I'll aim to do better. But I, I want to start. Doing. Yeah, mo- moving forward, I'll be keen to. Oh, as a question, we comment. Uh, did we... you share a pizza with Todd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could have. It says Facebook <laughs> user. Why can't I see names, Jeff? What's, what's it's Gurav. Gurav, Mac. Yeah, it's because Streamyard. You have to. You have to register for the um, you have to register and and give oh, Streamyard, okay. yeah. Which yeah, some people, but yeah, that's um, that's been a great session. Really appreciate you being being vulnerable and transparent and and uh, yeah, just taking the time, Josh. So, um, I you, I don't think you have any. You are do have some things in the works. So, do you want to pass off to that, or what? What sort of thing do you want to share with the audience as we finish up? So I um, I'm. Sh- trying at the moment i'm doing my mortgage brokering course so outside of property i'm yeah working on that at the moment um yep. which is pretty which is pretty exciting so you're powering through it josh mate you're broke broken your way you're, you're making deals you're making it happen so yeah let's, let's yes let's carry that there yeah, nat says thanks guys all the best josh um yeah like keep keeping keep, keep an eye on josh and what he does with i i know that given your passion your interest in numbers and finance i'm sure that you will make a make broken winning posts as well yeah so yeah what what, what did you, you anything you any last words i think you've said last words todd but anything we can no, I reckon you, you guys have summed it up perfectly. I think everyone knows what the, the big takeaway is from, from this. And, yeah, you're definitely a, a young man to keep, uh, keep an eye on. Uh, yeah. Thank you both for your time. I really appreciate it. All right. Let's, let's, go, and, uh, let's go and negotiate a problem or uh, whatever. We're, let's go and buy a property, as, as Tucker says. See you, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm going to get a pizza. <laughs> let's go <laughs> buy a pizza. Yeah, <laughs>